Your team's shipping fast, your product's scaling, but emails are getting lost. Bounce rates are climbing, and you're flying blind on what's actually being delivered. You're not alone. I compared MailTrap and MailChimp sending APIs side by side, and found big differences in deliverability, analytics, and how much control you really get. In this video, we'll break it all down. Rate limits, throttling, multi-tenant setup, everything that matters when email is part of your app, not just a campaign tool. Hello and welcome to MailTrap videos where we explore the world of emails. What actually happens when your app needs to send 10,000 emails in a minute? Do you hit a wall, get throttled, or just hope for the best? That's exactly what I wanted to find out. So I tested how MailTrap and MailChimp respond under pressure. How much you can send, how fast, and what actually happens when the volume spikes. MailTrap and MailChimp both offer sending APIs, but they're designed for very different use cases. MailTrap is optimized for high volume, transactional, bulk, and marketing sends. It supports up to 500 messages per batch, allowing payloads of up to 50 megabytes, and has no fixed rate limits. That means your app can send at scale, without hitting delivery limits or rewriting logic. MailChimp splits sending between two APIs. The transactional API, formerly Mandrill, handles user-triggered, event-based sends with a 10 megabyte request limit. The marketing API is built for campaign operations, not real-time sending. It runs on shared infrastructure with strict connection limits and expects developers to handle pacing and batching on their own. The takeaway, MailTrap is built to handle high volume traffic with minimal effort from your team. No manual batching, no rate limit surprises. MailChimp, on the other hand, requires more developer workarounds and isn't built for fast, flexible product-driven sending. Okay, so you've moved past rate limits. Great, but that's not the whole picture. When email traffic suddenly doubles during a launch or your provider slows down without warning, the real test begins. That's where throttling, queuing, and retries come in. And trust me, not all platforms handle this the same way. Here's how MailTrap and MailChimp stack up behind the scenes. MailTrap handles throttling automatically using adaptive, system-level controls. Also, you can request domain-specific throttling if you need more flexibility. Queuing is built in. MailTrap can manage it for you, or you can control the flow yourself depending on your setup. If a message can't be delivered, it's retried for up to 24 hours, with hard bounces dropped immediately to protect your sender reputation. MailChimp handles things differently across its APIs. With the transactional API, messages are automatically queued when you hit limits and resume sending once quota resets. Marketing API enforces a strict limit of 10 simultaneous connections. It doesn't queue failed requests, so your team has to handle retries manually by catching 429 errors and waiting out the retry after window. For time-sensitive messages like signups, password resets, or system alerts, MailTrap gives you built-in stability with minimal engineering effort. MailChimp can handle the load, but your team will need to build around its limitations to maintain smooth delivery. An outage during peak traffic isn't just inconvenient, it can cost you users, revenue, and trust. That's why I looked into how MailTrap and MailChimp handle infrastructure resilience when things go sideways. Here's what I found. MailTrap is built on a distributed infrastructure designed for high availability. It maintains 99.99% uptime and handles load balancing automatically. If one path slows down or fails, traffic is rerouted without interruption. For advanced use cases, MailTrap can also configure custom routing based on domain or compliance needs. MailChimp also promises 99.99% uptime and handles failover automatically. It uses shared IP pools and backend infrastructure to reroute traffic if needed, but this process is fully managed internally. You don't get direct access or customization over how or where traffic flows. Both platforms are stable, but MailTrap offers more flexibility and visibility. Its infrastructure adapts in real time 
and can be customized for specific domains or compliance needs. MailChimp also handles routing effectively, but that process is managed internally with limited options for user level control. Now, I've seen companies trying to juggle five teams, three products, and two environments, all through a single email setup. It gets messy fast. I've compared how MailTrap and MailChimp handle scaling and multi-tenant support. Here are the main differences. MailTrap distributes traffic across multiple MTAs and IPs to handle volume spikes without slowdowns or delivery delays. It supports multi-tenant setups through stream-level separation, so you can isolate staging and production, or manage separate brands using different domains and API keys. Depending on your plan, you can connect up to 3,000 sending domains with full isolation. MailChimp handles high volumes as well, but it's built around scheduled campaign workflows. You don't get much flexibility in how traffic is routed or isolated. There's no support for stream separation, and IP level control is only available on the transactional side with limited customization. On the marketing side, everything runs through a single workspace. You can segment lists or duplicate emails, but there's no built-in way to isolate environments, credentials, or reporting. The transactional API does support sub-accounts, which gives you some separation, but only for user-triggered emails. In short, MailTrap is built for structured scale, with stream isolation, flexible routing, and support for multi-environment setups. MailChimp handles volume well, but without native stream separation or environment controls, managing complex or multi-brand workflows can get messy. So, you've scaled your setup, but now comes the next challenge, visibility. When deliverability drops or users stop clicking, how do you figure out what went wrong? I dug into MailTrap and MailChimp's analytics, blogs, and webhooks to see how much clarity you actually get. MailTrap gives you full deliverability analytics. Delivery status, opens, clicks, mailbox provider breakdown, and branded HTTPS tracking links. Message logs stay available for up to 30 days and can be exported anytime as CSV. It also offers webhooks for delivery, bounce, open, click, unsubscribe, and spam complaints with built-in retry logic to keep your data flowing even if something fails. MailChimp splits these capabilities. The marketing API offers campaign-level metrics like opens, clicks, and bounces, while the transactional API gives you message-level insights and a dedicated message search endpoint for deep tracking. Logs are retained for up to 30 days and accessible via UI or API export. If a webhook fails, MailChimp's transactional API retries up to 20 times with intervals between 15 and 25 minutes. The marketing API has more restricted webhook support with no clear retry handling. If you need consistent visibility across different types of email traffic, from product notifications to bulk campaigns, MailTrap keeps things streamlined with unified tracking and event coverage. MailChimp offers strong capabilities, especially for transactional email, but the separation between APIs can add complexity when you're working with multiple use cases. All right, let's talk developer experience. You've got your backend logic in place, triggers are set. Now it's time to plug in the email API. But how fast can your team actually integrate it? test safely, and move to production without surprises. I tried it myself. Here's what building with MailTrap and MailChimp really looks like. But before we dive into the developer experience of these two APIs, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so you don't miss our upcoming comparisons of popular email APIs. MailTrap makes things easy for developers. You get a REST API with open API spec and official SDKs for major languages. It integrates with Zapier, Make.com, Superbase, and even includes an MCP server for AI-assisted email workflows. For QA teams, MailTrap offers an email sandbox, a safe environment to test how emails behave in your app without delivering to users. You can automate tests, integrate with CI/CD, 
inspect HTML and CSS, check spam scores and headers, forward test emails to approved recipients, and simulate bounces. MailChimp also provides solid documentation and SDKs and fits well into campaign-centered workflows. But when it comes to testing, it doesn't include a dedicated sandbox environment. Instead, testing is mostly manual. Inside the marketing UI, you'll find preview and test send features, which shows how your email renders across different clients. But those tools are only available on the standard plan and above. When you send test emails, they count toward your monthly limit. And in preview mode, dynamic merge tags don't work, so what you see might not reflect what your users will actually get. Also, there's no API sandbox, so to test in staging, you'll need to send real emails to internal segments or build your own testing setup outside of MailChimp. Put simply, MailTrap gives developers and QA teams everything they need clean docs, real SDKs, and a proper testing sandbox. MailChimp supports basic campaign workflows, but when it comes to testing and automation, it's not built for flexibility. You've integrated the API, set up testing, and everything's running smoothly. But what happens when you hit a question the docs don't cover, or you're setting up something more advanced? Even with solid tools, sometimes you need a bit of guidance. I looked into what kind of support you actually get with MailTrap and MailChimp and how each one steps in when you need a hand. MailTrap offers 24-7 ticket-based support on all plans, with real humans on the other end. The team includes developers and deliverability managers, so you're not stuck explaining technical issues to someone who doesn't get it. On the business plan, you also get live chat, priority support, and free access to deliverability experts who can help optimize your setup or troubleshoot complex issues. MailChimp includes email support for the first 30 days on the free plan. Essentials and standard plans include 24-7 email and chat, while the premium plan adds phone support and priority handling. MailTrap gives you access to experts, including deliverability managers and developers, even on the baseline plans. And if you're scaling fast or handling sensitive flows, that kind of help is hard to beat. MailChimp's support works well for standard use cases, but scaling teams or complex setups may need to budget for extra help. If you're choosing between MailTrap and MailChimp for API-based sending, the right fit depends on how email works within your product. MailTrap is designed for teams who need consistent handling of transactional and marketing flows through a single API experience. It supports high volume sending, built-in testing with an email sandbox, and delivers clear analytics across all major event types. It's flexible enough for multi-tenant setups and backed by technical support, even on baseline plans. MailChimp offers robust capabilities, especially through its transactional API, and is a strong choice for marketing-driven use cases. But its split architecture and limited customization options can add complexity if you're working across environments or trying to centralize control. If you're looking for simplicity, structure, and flexibility in how you manage your email traffic, MailTrap makes it easier to build, scale, and support email as part of your core product. And if you're curious how MailTrap stacks up against other platforms like Resend, SendGrid, and Postmark, Check out our dedicated playlist for side-by-side -side breakdowns. See you there, folks.